What is this matchup? I'm only going to do one of these. They're like 45 minutes. 46. This is an interesting matchup. Run it back, gaming. Alright, I'll just host that. You gotta remind me at the time, though. And then I'll hop on co commentary. Nice 30 versus 3, what the fuck? Left side is getting owned. I've been meaning to make a Yang guide for the. Well, I was gonna say for the Shuriken channel, but actually I would just re upload all the other ones onto my channel. But I've been meaning to make a Yang one forever. I just haven't. Yang is really simple. He's not easy, he's just simple. He's kind of easy too. But there's a little bit of nuance to him, and the nuance is the thing I'm worried I'm going to mess up because I'm not a Yang main. So I'll probably have a disclaimer at the beginning of the video, it's basically like that. But Yang is, is pretty, pretty straightforward. His mix-ups are pretty clear. Uh, gameplay of him is pretty much usually the same things. The nuance is in really weird places, though. One of them is say Ambu, obviously. The teleport is kind of nuanced. Good times to do that. Yeah, it's... Well, I don't know, actually. I always assumed to be his cat. The TC, that's really strange. He did light kick, medium kick, and he stopped there. Doing that TC at all is pretty weird. But doing just the first two hits of the TC is even weirder. That is a very common TC to do, only the first two hits. Oh, it hit. I found out recently that um, if you have exactly zero health, I found it from a Crystal Cube video, because he mentioned that again in a recent one. If you have exactly zero health in this game, you can't quick stand. Even if you're still alive. You can, like, have exactly zero health and you're not dead yet, you know. Damn, that was dominant. Didn't even let him touch the ground. Necro's like, I ain't done with you. I don't know if I'd mention it in the Yang video, but one big thing about Yang in Third Strike is that he's um he's a small body, so he falls out of a lot of combos. The identical body to Yan, I'm pretty sure. Went for the red. I admire that. You get a way bigger punish if you get a red parry on the last hit, and it's also very low low damage if you miss it. But it is a hard knockdown. Fancy. Was that still a punish? Probably. It's possible that Necro could have stopped mashing and been able to block that in time. Side switch on parry is often easier than you would think, because oftentimes there will be an autocorrect on the parry. It'll be like you tap forward and you go over the opponent's head and then they parry the other, dire the other way. Um, and after that, you have to change parry directions, but you can, like, react to it. It's like, as soon as my character turns around for the parry, I have to start parrying the other way. It's kind of weird and something you wouldn't want to worry about. That TC. But, um, once you know to look for it, it's not very hard. Attention, Ryu. No, this is SA1 Ryu. I was looking at the meters wrong. I just saw a little three on the bottom right. But Dungeon, that would be too short for Dungeon. It's three bars anyway. I say one Ryu's hype. I really like him. This Ryu's pretty good. I really like the way he's moving. Yeah, very safe. See how he did jump back roundhouse there? And then jump in roundhouse? Nice. Big damage on that. If those roundhouses were parried, the jump roundhouses, he was still alive. He wasn't even that badly hurt. It's risk, good risk management. Nice. Love the stuff. Tatsu? Yeah. He gets two hits. That can get one or two hits based on how the opponent parries. But both hits of Tatsu does a shitload of damage. Basically, Tatsu normally 
has a pretty high juggle state and like disables following combos and also just doesn't hit properly anyway. Um, throws the opponent too far back. But the super prevents the opponent from getting thrown throw that far back and it also does the... Um, uh, it resets the juggle state. So you can actually see the damage on that is pretty wild even though he parried because he ate two hits of hard thought too. So yeah, he took like as much as if he ate the super. That's a scenario I mentioned with Ryu in my Ryu video. It's uh, pretty neat. Tatsu is the typical thing Ryu can do there, but Ryu can actually make it even harder for the opponent to land by like doing stuff like mashing jab. Or, um, I don't know, another super. There's other stuff. Extension now. That was like a death scenario. Getting out of that alive was almost impossible. Very difficult red. I'd say two Elena is probably the standard one. I would say probably 60-70% of Elena's CIC pick the Seeper. Maybe more. I really like that engine. It's alright. It had a high chance of success, but it just, like... Elena was at zero stun, and he couldn't really charge it that long. Whoa! That hit. I hate, I hate when I eat a uh, Shuriken like that. Nice. That's safe even if it's parried. That's like one of the areas where EX Rhino Horn is insanely strong, is when it's like a preemptive anti air. It's probably its main purpose. When Alanis throw it out like that. But unfortunately, it's so slow that you kind of have to. Oh, Bagdash was bold. EX Rhino Horn is so slow, you can't really do it in reaction to jumps. You can for some characters in some, some scenarios. Now it's SC2 Ryu. This is that Ryu from last video who's running all three supers. Versatile. His strat versus low health characters was to pick SA2 and just win if he ever connected SA2. He got far fierce there. You want to parry into close fierce. That's why a lot of Ryu's do down fierce. There's some nuance. Rare footage of Yang nuance. You usually see that as a corner combo, but he actually did it as a close anti-air combo. It doesn't work normally, I think. Maybe it does versus some characters. But it does work in the corner, and it does work in that very high connect. Interesting. Jab reset? No. Palm. This is really hard to come back from. He might do it. Oh my god. In that context, universal overhead is pretty minus, but it's hard to punish. Yang might have been able to throw a punish it or something. But pretty minus the XDP is, you know, the yellow play. Oh, it's literally like it's over. Hold on, look at this damage from the jump in. Oh my god, this does so fucking much on Yang's health. This does so much damage in general. Oh my god. Oh my god. SAT versus low health characters. You only need one opening. That might be my favorite super in the game animation wise. Nice. This is like almost block string into dungeon. It was, he should have done that. Block string into dungeon, basically one on the spot. Nice. Uh, I was gonna say he's... Hmm. It's probably intended to be Nyx Fireball. That was a really weird XDP. I really like that EX Fireball, but I understand it. It was low risk and it won on the spot of it hit. Ah! Back jab anti air. That was actually sick. Pretty risky. It was probably parry into back jab anti air. Back jab is so quick to recover that even if they parry it, they don't get a punish. Made him land into a. Uh, on parry below. Nice, that's intended to be parried. This Necro's killing it right now, I like the way he's playing. Yeah! That was it. Oh, he might have had he might have had a second super there. Um Anti-air low short 
he trained Ryu with the anti-air like electricity and the anti-air normal into electricity and stuff like that. He was training Ryu for a jump and parry. And then right when Ryu was incentivized fully to go for jump and parry, he anti-air with low short fucking super. Low short like super. I'll be very proud of you if you prep for work. Whoa! That juggle was super funny looking. So when you get an air-to-air -air, uh, that dizzies the opponent, most air-to-airs are JP3. So you've got a little bit of stuff you can still do on the ground. Dudley almost certainly had something else there. Theoretically, if it was all the way in the corner, he could have done an air normal and then like two, lo three low run houses. Or like two low run houses ducking straight, ducking upper. Ooh, early back run house right here. It's super cool. That's probably a punish. That shit's pretty minus, but the pushback is insane. That rock confirms. Necro just missed it. But you can use a, a, an electricity confirm super. You don't need anything else. You don't need a normal into it. Uh. Let's confirm. Every fucking normal Dudley has goes into SA3. Shit's stupid. It's SA1 now. I see a lot of Dudleys pick SA1 versus... Um, Elena and Chun-Li. I'm not 100% sure on the thought process. I thought with Chun-Li it was like I'm going to get a few opportunities so I want more damage out of them. Ugh. That's disgusting. I hate Elena. Sam Roundhouse into EX Machine Blow doesn't combo on crouching Elena. Fucking hell. That's stupid. That's like that's like how Elena plays though. That's like her weapon that she brings into the fight. This hitbox nonsense. Nice. I mean it's all part of neutral domination. Not that she really dominates neutral. It's okay. She's okay in neutral. It really depends on the matchup. There's some characters she just fucks up, like Hugo, I think. And then other characters where she's just, like, fine in neutral, but then middling in other areas. You win. Yeah, someone stole his car. Are you going to be in a good mood if someone steals your car? Now. That low strong kind of fucking Elena. They both forward dash at the same time. Pretty sure Ryu and what Ryu and Sean? Excuse me, I can't stop counting. I think Ryu and Sean are tied for fastest forward dash, but don't quote me on that. It's like a 14 frame forward dash. And I think you can cancel it into blocking like after frame 10 or some bullshit. I forget. There's a little bit of nonsense. My bungus. Roundhouse and background house are both extraordinary pokes. Oh, that was that might have been a punish. EXDP. Super jump out. <laughs> Lena's super jump is very slow. It is weird though. If you're not really expecting it. Um, there was no good wake up there. He had to parry, and it was a guess on when. EXDP would have traded. And by that I mean lost because Denjin killed him. And then um Super would have also traded, and by that I mean lost. Minus four. Oh, just when someone just says that. Ibuki's piercing attack, and then that fucking commentator, who was it? Said it sounded like Here Kitty Cat. Was it someone at Wednesday Night Fights? That's just a punish. Rekka's punish is Shoto Sweep. I knew EX Rekka punished it. Seeing Rekka punish it, I think I've seen before, but it's just kind of cool. And tier low. It also was potentially a punish if Ryu was still in landing frames. SF5 really got it right with minus 4 on everything. 
Oof. Is it over? No, it's not over. It's over! Jesus! There's low scaling on that. Just one hit into super. Oh. That's JP1. So you get it in the corner, you get really cool juggles. Mid screen, you get nothing, obviously. That's really cool. Anti air stay medium kick, and then he uh, jump parried because he got parried. But Ryu actually did a jump strong two hit. That's super cool, though. It's a way to stay safe even if your anti air gets parried. A lot of nuance to Yang. It's always in r weird spots. To this day, I don't know if there's a difference between Yang and Yun's dive kick. I kind of feel like there is, but I might be making it up. I feel like Yang's hitbox might be more in front of him, and Yun's might be more below him. But again, I may be making that up. Nice. Big damage on that. Nice, good confirm. Rock referring at a back strong, beautiful look, he did it twice. Like a fucking Chun Li player. <laughs> Ryu might have parried multiple times, but he might not even from that angle and that timing of the parry. Maybe he didn't even have a punish. That hit so deep. I don't think Necro had a combo though. Even though it was a universal red that hit very late, it wasn't point blank. Linking out of it, maybe he had low short. Oh! That was pretty low risk for you. What's Necro gonna do? Fucking far fierce him. Far strong, super, in a perfect world. That was a really nice whiff punish using the DP though. Or like counter hit or whatever. Could have confirmed that electricity into super. That was light spinning hook, so no super confirm. That confirms the super with SA1, but not SA3. Bad guess on the parry. Now it's very dangerous for Necro. There it goes. Essentially better that now he's gonna do a block string into super. Or not. If it was me, I probably would have done something like stand forward, DP, super, but that's vulnerable to parry. He needed the block string to build the meter for the super, but um, if you get parried, you get no meter. So what I would have done was pretty risky. Back to SA1. What the fuck was that? Is that really a good idea? Pretty fancy little scenario after the fact too. Ryu knows that you re you return to a forward jump state after you get parried midair. So he attacked on the way up with the normal and then attacked on the way down with the normal. Yeah, they're the same players for sure. This is 100% the same Ryu. This Ryu's playstyle is quite unique. He's also of a similar skill level. And the super selection seals the deal. This is a really good Ryu. Very fun to watch. Yeah, I love that. You see that shit? And normally you can only do that after air-to-air -air lights or mediums. Um, lights anywhere, mediums is a bit more specific. Heavies, it usually doesn't work at all. But the JP state is 3, but it throws the opponent super far away. But because it's in the corner, the throwback doesn't matter. This is parryable, but it's unblockable. And then it resets the circle count when it hits. And also, if the opponent parries it, it's a mix-up scenario because Ryu can Tatsu. We saw that scenario earlier. So overall, it's a great scenario for you. Stuff like that actually makes this one really good. Ryu can truly make any super work, and they all—all all three of them—have really different playstyles. That was pretty sexy. I guess I built some meter too. 100%. It was the play after you played the first set of Tatsu. It was just all guaranteed. You can OS against the other versions of Tatsu, or rather, just react. Um, I haven't bought new shoes in a while. Maybe I did. Maybe my current shoes are only... I think I bought new sneakers, like... I think I bought 
I think I've owned three pairs of sneakers in the last ten years. It's like a pair I wore in high school, and then, and then like four years after high school, and another pair I wore for like eight, uh, like another five years, and then I got a, a more recent pair. When I went to college, I roomed with a... My first roommate had um, something like 10 pairs of sneakers. And I was like, bruh, why do you need all these sneakers for? But that's why I'm not fucking... That's why the girls aren't fawning over me. I did that. Oof. Wake up super. In high school, the shoes I wore, I like did the knot one time, and then I realized I could slip into the shoes without undoing the knot, and yet they wouldn't be loose while I was wearing them. And I never undid that knot for something like like all the years I owned them. And it was perfect, and I've never had that with any new sneakers. I just want to go back to that period, where the, sh the shoes were the perfect tightness. Tying shoes is just fucked. Velcro is better for everyone, and we all know it, but everyone's like, oh, Velcro is for children. Shoelaces are the worst of all worlds. Low parry the drill. That's kind of cool, because that was also an OS against empty drill low short. It's kind of funny. I was at Home Depot recently. Oh, the parry during freeze looked funny as hell. That was a horrible scenario for Ryu though. After that I got parried. It was GG. There was no surviving. I feel like there's a level where your shoes are so bad that they're kind of cool again. I feel like if you're a relatively good looking person and you're wearing like fucking Velcro shoes with Elmo on the side. It kind of, like, goes. I think there might be something to that. Oh my god. Well. He didn't win if even we got that parry. Still at the... If they lit up, and if they had the fucking heel wheels. Yeah. Same thought. Fingers touched from across the world. When I was in M R R Mississippi, there was a roller rink. And I did fucking laps on the roller rink in roller skates, and they played disco music. And I've never done that since then, but I have fond memories of it. And I was just thinking, like, I want that to come back. Do you think there's still a place for that in this world? There's no roller rinks near me. There's a few, there's a lot of ice rinks near me, but no roller rinks. Ice rinks just aren't the same. Nice. Great punish. They don't even play music at ice rinks. At least not any of the ones I've been to. It's always fucking disco. It's always dance music or disco at roller rinks, and it's always fucking hype as hell. Or like funk, sometimes. Roller rinks are an experience. It's fun, it's easy. Anyone can roller skate, and you feel good when you're roller skating. If you've never roller skated, then fucking go buy some, um, go buy some skates. Still, he's killing it right now. I want the Atlanta to win a little bit though. Nice space slide. 
Yeah, I like this lane of play. This is like how Elena shines, is exactly this. The problem is it's all very weak to parries. Nice, I got lit up by that recently at that tournament. I got blown up by anti-air low short super. I was not fucking checking my toes when I landed. That hit me twice, I think. Burfy fucking nailed me to the wall with that shit. Oh, he could have reacted to that. Was that a punish? No, it was just a regular super jump. That's such a weird thing to do, but it worked. What the fuck? He did it again. He's going for crosscut DP, maybe? There we go. In Mississippi, that was it. It was the place to hang out, because there was, like, nowhere to go. Mississippi's a sad fucking place. Never go there. You know what's funny? In all the time I lived in Mississippi, the saying was, at least we're not Alabama. And then I recently found out in Alabama, they say, at least we're not Mississippi. It's just a fucking race to the bottom of those two. Literally the only two things to do in Mississippi were to drugs or to fucking cheat on your wife. That's all anyone did. They either did drugs or they cheated on their wife. Unless they were women. Or perhaps they were, you know, married to men in other circumstances. And then they cheated on their husband. Whoa! Second hit only. That might have been a red parry attempt, but he didn't realize it was going to be a fucking uppercut. Or maybe he just blocked and then tried to do something, I don't know. Yeah, the women drink and cheat on their husbands. My two best friends in Mississippi, one of them, the mom, got a new boyfriend. And, um, she divorced the dad. That was already a little bit of a deadbeat, but he became like an extra deadbeat when he got divorced. Kind of a shame. Like a little elephant. And what's really fucked is the mom was just like, yeah, I don't want the kids. You can just have them. I feel like you don't see that very often. She had two children. I bet the Dakotas say that about each other. I bet every state like has a sister state just throws shade at that state. Anyway, my other friend in Mississippi. Um, the dad was really cool to that first friend. He was like a deadbeat, but he was like a good dad. Or he tried, anyway. He was nice. He's always good to me. Um, the other friend was the one with the Black Widow mom. That one's a really good story if you guys haven't heard it. I've told it on stream before, I think several times. But basically, the long and short of it is this kid had a dad who um, seemed to be healthy and normal, although they always seemed to be healthy and normal. And then, uh, like, less than a year after we moved in, a few months after we moved in, he committed suicide by hanging himself. And the mom immediately bought a Corvette, convertible Corvette, and was driving around the city with it, with the insurance money. And that is not necessarily condemning, because it could have been that he just was hiding his pain, and also that was her fucking method of coping. Those things are not too weird, even in combination. A lot of people just want to move on really fast. Different people react to death in different ways. But um, the thing that especially made it awful was she had a new boyfriend within, like, um, I think, like, a few a few weeks or at least within a couple months and um uh you know that's that's you know maybe she just really like needs a fucking uh that's still not too condemning because it's like maybe she really needs a ooh that throw maybe she really needs a fucking what's that called bounce back what's the word for that rebound she really needs a rebound she's lonely but it's a little bit more suspicious, right? Um, but then this is the the nail in the coffin is uh, the new boyfriend after a little while uh, committed suicide by hanging himself, and I think somehow she he like left his fucking will to her. 
And when you have like a fucking husband who hangs himself and then a boyfriend who hangs himself. Um, it's like, wow, like, you're not killing them, are you? We'll never know. But like everyone in everyone in the town knew fucking that story. I was friends with her son though. He was a pretty cool guy. I call him a pretty cool guy, but I was like six and he was five. Imagine having your fucking dad commit suicide when you're five. Just fuck you up. He was a pretty normal kid though. Um This is also the mom who bought her five-year-old son Mortal Kombat Trilogy on the N64, which was my first fighting game. I liked it a lot. If not for her, I wouldn't be here right now. So, thank you. Woman. I was about to say her name, and it's just like, I don't want to, like, you know... I don't want to, like... I don't want to slander. No. MK Trilogy on 64 is pretty cool. But, um... You know. That's not a, a good game to buy a five-year-old. That would be a Poketuber if not for her. I don't think that Mortal Kombat Trilogy, me experiencing that game as a six-year-old, did anything. It definitely gave me a lot to think about, but I don't think it fucked me up. Pokemon game should I play to get back into Pokemon? Uh, Heart Gold. Heart Gold, but your playthrough is um, a centret. You have to release your starter and catch a Sentret. And then the Sentret is your starter. Remember the fatality that really shocked me was the the Deadpool one, where you get uppercutted into the acid and then a skeleton pops out. That kind of shocked me a little bit. Even as like a six-year-old, I knew a lot of the fatalities were just silly, like the one where Jade puts you on the stick and then shakes you really hard, and then you explode. That Mega Ruby is a pretty good game. I beat it anyway. I would say that's the most... Mm, probably that. Sub-Zero and Scorpion probably had what I would call the most shocking fatalities. So it's not a wonder they were very popular characters. Nice. I didn't even finish Moon. There's like a whole fucking gen of Pokemon I didn't finish and then another whole gen I didn't play. I got close. Dink. You love to see it. Trees with faces are pretty spooky. Sub Zero is easy to play even as a noob too. I knew how to do the um I knew how to do the ice ball. It's like down forward light punch or whatever. Front punch. Train stage fatality. I forgot about that one.
I saw Matrix pretty young and that had like a fucking guy get hit by a train in it. I saw that movie when it was like relatively new. Matrix 1. And that came out in like 99 or something or 2000. And that was like 9. Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat 2 having a fatality where he turns into Kintaro sounds like the most made-up thing imaginable. Sounds like something someone would just say. But then it's real. Yeah, not only did he have one more fatality than all other characters, so like it already sounds like bullshit because he already has two other fatalities. And then the activation condition is really ridiculous too. You have to hold the punch for like, like the whole round. Yeah. And then it's like, oh yeah, he turns into the boss, but for the fatality only. There were like hella rumors that he could turn into uh, Kintaro or like Goro or something like that. Or Shao Kahn. But then it turns out he actually, like, you actually could do that. And he did have an extra fatality and he could turn into Katara. Mortal Kombat literally, like, got all of its success off of that. Half of it was the gore and half of it was, like, the cryptic, like, secrets they hid into the game. From the special move codes to the fatality codes. Fighting games were really good about that kind of thing. And that's unfortunately a relic that's died. Fighting games are still good, but they don't have that anymore. It's not possible for them to have that anymore. If you knew how to do a special move and no one else had to do it, you had such an advantage compared to everyone else. And that is simply not a component of fighting games anymore. No, uh, Kintaro? Was that even his name? There's Motaro in Mortal Kombat 3. Goro in Mortal Kombat 1. I think it was Kintaro. It's like the very forgettable Shokan. All the other ones have a lot more relevancy now. Gora's come back loads of times in Shiva's, you know. Come back twice in much more relevant roles. Look at the frog. Look at it jump. Mortal Kombat had the special moves and then also had the dialogue combos, but the dialogue combos were a lot easier to figure out, so that was like, you know, that was kind of a nice way to bring that to the people. You could just pick Noob Saibot and fucking hit like uh, front kick four times and then like get a combo. And it's like, oh my god. Whoa, yes! That link always works, but it was crouching Necro, so it was easier. He did towards Fierce into EXTP. That's one frame on a standing opponent, so it's very inconsistent, but on a crouching opponent, it's looser. I think it's quite reliable on a crouching opponent, especially into EX. It works into regular on a crouching opponent. You can do regular DP there. That's the real thing, that's hilarious. Shiva can't even beat herself. I should say Shiva can't even get a fair fight against herself. It does look like real life, since it's just rotoscoped with photos. The animation's not super smooth, but you know, visually. Ooh, that was the forward, forward dash with the block frames. You can block part way through that. Nice. Decent thing to do there. DP has high, good speed and a good hitbox. And thus is a good thing to do when you don't really know what's about to happen. Of course, it's risky. I just want to see this Elena win. It's kind of looking like he's going to win this round, unless something horrible happens. Like a dungeon. Sorry, I hope that wasn't super loud. I accidentally touched my mic. M.K. 9 is a 
it's it's it was a return to what a lot of people it's it's definitely a return to what people forgot about fighting games. It's a mess, but a lot of people miss messy fighting games. And it's like the first messy fighting game in a long time. SF4 reinvented fighting games and then MK9 kind of re-ruined them, but it re-ruined them in such a way that it was like a way that people missed. Injustice won a little bit as well. Oh. This is super scary. Oh my god. Oh my god. You hate to see it. It's a miracle he didn't get by that tattoo. MK is really clean as of 10 and 11. And Injustice 2, I guess. MKX I don't think is too clean, but MK11 could be too clean. That's a common complaint I see, and it's one I've kind of thought myself. You kind of want some character to just have a 50% combo. Well, actually, that actually that exists. A lot of characters have like 500 damage combos. I just say you want, I don't know, you want some grime somewhere. I guess I should have said like 600 or 700. The problem is 50% combos are everywhere, but they often re require one or two crushing blows. And crushing blows are a pretty novel idea. They're a safe way to have broken stuff and then have it not be dominant because you can only just do it once. So it just brings a, a new tier of resource management and a fairly interesting tier of resource management. Very fun and controllable too for the player. Uh, didn't combo. What's funny is that was so minus that Necro could have repositioned himself and still got the punish. Oh, this is like over. Oh. I kind of feel like uh, KO14 was a bit too sterile after KO13 was the perfect amount of grimy. I think of all the games I played, KO13 perfectly balanced grimy and sterile. It's a very hard balance to hit. I think most Street Fighter games are too sterile. Street Fighter 3 has a decent amount of grime. Maybe too much. It's really hard to make a decent amount of agreeable grime. Crushing blows are actually what I would call agreeable grime. And they're one of the features I kind of like about MK11. But a lot of them are too specific and a lot of them are too easy. Final round. But then that's kind of grime in and of itself. When there's different difficulties for your fucking grimy shit. Maybe seems to have a nice amount of grime. Guilty Gear, I couldn't comment. I never want to see Mitigate spelled like that again. Yun. Great anti here, by the way. That's a hard quick stand to do because he got uh, the super freeze was right before he landed. Eats up his inputs. Oh, that normally links. He was too far away, I guess. That's probably pretty hard after command grab. Ooh. I definitely don't want to see Medigate spelled like that. That's the worst thing I've ever seen. Meaning in the Nickelodeon game. I don't know. I've only seen gameplay footage once, and I was surprised at how Smash-like it looks. Um, Nigel Thornberry. He's in it, right? 
Is there a cat dog? Can I play cat dog? Is cat dog even Nickelodeon? SpongeBob. Uh, is there Fairly Odd Parents? There's um. What's that show? Danny Phantom. Right. Oh yeah, Ren and Stimpy. What the fuck? Oh, that's a cool starter. Oh, he got the link and then still dropped it. That was, like, he could have just killed it in such an easy way. And then he just fucked around. No Jimmy Neutron, no Fairly Odd Parents. What the fuck were they thinking? Jimmy Neutron better be the last boss. Those are very conspicuous. Yeah, um, Aang and then Korra, right? Or is it someone else in the Korra? Cat dog. Hmm. Helga from Hey Arnold. Instant main. I've played against Zoomers who like a little bit of grime. Who started with like modern games and then were like, wow, this is different. It definitely sounds disagreeable on the surface. But it's a different feeling when you have some grime and your opponent doesn't. It's fun being grimy. It's the same way that it's fun playing a top tier. It's another feeling that's kind of gone from balanced fighting games. No one in modern fighting games is truly as crazy as like fucking old Sagat. And how much they simplify and break the game. Oh yeah, there's some Loud House characters right there. You win. Oh, it ended. I guess I'm going to go to bed. Seems about time. It's been fun.